a young man was sitting alone in his yard. He was playing around with a makeshift camera that featured a lens made out of opera glasses. His name was Robert Cornelius, and he would become the first person to ever take a selfie. These days, to take a selfie, it takes no more than a blink of an eye. Back then, Robert needed to stand still and look forward for a staggering 15 minutes. This picture, which shows him with his collar upturned and his messy hair, is now featured at the Library of Congress, along with many other of his works. This first ever selfie was a daguerreotype. These types of images are very different from what we know as photographs today. Back then, the process to obtain such an image was the first commercially successful photographic one. It got its name after its inventor, a man named Louis-Jacques Mondet Daguerre. Each daguerreotype is a single image featured on a silvered copper plate. It's really heavy and not at all flexible, but on the other hand, it's sharp and pretty accurate, especially for those days. It also has a delicate surface, which resembles a mirror. Unlike the first selfie, the first photograph of a person came to be completely by accident. It happened back in the 1800s too, when Louis Daguerre was looking to snap an image of the Boulevard du Temple in Paris. But if you look closely, you'll see that somewhere in the city streets, there is a man getting his shoes polished. But why is this image so special though? Well, back in those days, to get a picture of a person, they would have needed to stand still for quite some time, since the exposure of photos lasted for several minutes. Lucky for Louis Daguerre, since the man was getting his shoes polished, he was also standing still for the photo too, without even knowing it. Since it took so long to take a good quality picture, you can easily imagine, the younger the subject, the more difficult it would become to keep them standing still for such a long time. Take a look at these 19th century family pictures. Seems creepy enough, right? That weirdly veiled figure in the background has a very specific purpose. Most often, it was the mother that had to dress up in the background so that she could safely hold her offspring in her lap and calm them down while taking the photo. Some would dress up as chairs, others as curtains, while some just slapped a carpet over themselves for the perfect Victorian portrait. Otherwise, everyone would be bouncing around and the photos would have become a blurry mess. While we're on the subject of Victorian photographs, ever seen anyone smiling in any of these? Yeah, you wouldn't have either if you'd have been photographed that way, trust me. For people to remain still for as long as possible, photographers often used back braces for their subjects. Let's just say they weren't the most comfortable contraptions. Even with these weird tricks and gizmos, Victorian photos weren't always perfect. That's why almost all of them were manually retouched with a pencil after they were taken. Think of it like the ancestor of Photoshop. Also, Queen Victoria was a trendsetter in her own right when it comes to photography. She is said to be the first one to have used the word photo. She probably came to use this abbreviation since she was the first British monarch to be photographed. How about the word itself? Photography, where does that come from? It originates from Greek, and it translates to drawing with light. These days, you can take a picture with almost every sort of gadget. Your laptop can take a picture, your phone, and you might even get to snap a selfie with your smartwatch. It's almost impossible to figure out exactly how many pictures are taken each day, but some have estimated the number to be over 1 trillion each year. Other reports mention that there are 95 million photos uploaded every day on Instagram and over 300 million on Facebook. Most of us think we have a good side when taking pictures. People at Wake Forest University did some interesting research on the subject and found that to be quite true. Our left side does appear to be more attractive. And it may have to do with the fact that the left side of our face shows more emotion than our right side. The Apollo 11 mission reached the moon in 1969, and the crew carried with them 12 Hasselblad cameras. They were intended to snap those valuable images of the moon's surface for all of us to see. So where are they today? Well, they were left there on the moon. 
Neil Armstrong and his crew decided that the cameras were too heavy to carry back, especially since they wanted to bring back home over 50 pounds worth of rock samples. They did bring the film back, though. The oldest photograph in the world is about 200 years old. If that's not impressive enough, it also took around eight hours to capture it. It was taken by Joseph Niepce in saint loup de Forain, France, and titled simply, View from the Window. The image features a castle and other buildings from that area. To complete this project, Niepce had to project an image from the window to hit a sensitized plate. He then used this plate to transfer the details to a piece of paper. Luckily, despite how delicate it is, the image still exists today. You might think the world's most viewed photograph in history to be that of a celebrity or of a famous landmark. You'd be wrong. It's in fact Windows XP's default wallpaper. The image is called Bliss, and it's an unedited photo of a green hill and cloudy blue skies. It's difficult to estimate precisely how many people have seen this image, but somewhere in the range of billions. The world's most expensive photo ever sold was captured by Andreas Gorski back in 1999. It's called Rhine II and shows the Western European river Rhine. The minimalist picture shows these waters between the green grass and under the sky. However, it's not unedited. The photographer digitally removed dog walkers and a building before completing his work. It wasn't until 2011 that this photo was sold for $4,338,500 at a New York auction. Another photographer, Peter Lick, claims to have sold an even more expensive image, worth over $7 million. But since his buyer chose to remain anonymous, there's no official record of this purchase ever taking place. Speaking of famous photographers, no list would be complete without mentioning the works of Yusuf Karsh, a Canadian-Armenian photographer. He's known as the greatest portrait photographer of the 20th century. His portfolio includes images of Winston Churchill, Queen Elizabeth II, Grace of Monaco, Albert Einstein, Audrey Hepburn, Pablo Picasso, and so many more. There are many other subtle ways a photograph can help that you don't even know of, like keeping a small photo in your wallet. A test was performed in which 240 wallets were lost on purpose, each containing the contact address of the owners. 88% of those that had a photo of the owner's offspring inside were returned. 53% of those that featured a picture of a pet had the same fate too. Those wallets that didn't have any photos had a really slim chance of being returned. Only 15%. Browsing through pictures of cute tiny kittens? Count me in. I mean, it's still one of the most popular searches on Google. However, this funny concept is much older than you'd think. Turns out that cat photography dates back to the 19th century. It all started in the 1870s, when a man named Harry Pointer took a photo of his cat. He moved on to even more pictures with his feline friends, showcasing them either resting, drinking milk, or sleeping in a basket. He continued to specialize in cat photography, and his works are still awesome to look at to this day, with one image even showing a cat trying to ride a bike. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or 